Why? Well, for one thing, you can't divide by zero, and information scientists such as Dr. Donald Johnson tell us that the odds of anything random making new information is exactly zero. That doesn't actually make sense. And information scientists aren't actually scientists. They're glorified librarians. How can they be so sure? Because it is against a scientific law of the universe. In this presentation, I will refer to it as the law of increasing randomness. Well, there's actually no such thing. And I'd like to point out that randomness doesn't actually physically exist. Instead, what we have is our inability to predict things, which says more about our perception than anything else. It's the same law that says things will rust, wear out, wind down, break down, die, disperse, spread out, grow old. There is no scientific law that says that those things will happen. That's just the result of those things being in a hostile environment. Go from order to disorder. Scientists and such have avoided using the terms order, disorder, and chaos. And that is because, surprisingly, it can be very misleading. Now based on this comment, I'm going to take a wild guess and say that you're going to talk about the second law of thermodynamics. However, that's not talking about the order of the universe, that is talking about entropy, which has a very rigorous scientific definition. And from more information to less information. No, there's no scientific law that says anything like that because that doesn't even make sense. If that was true, then no book could ever be written at all. University of Texas mathematics professor Granville Sewell explains that it is a mathematical law based upon probabilities over time. Basically, the law states that as time passes, any given event will be drawn from a state of lower probability to higher probability. Okay, here's the only thing that he could be talking about and making sense at the same time. Let's say you have a certain scenario. We'll call it scenario one. And within that scenario, there is a certain probability of event A happening. Now, if we give more time to that scenario, it is more likely that that event will happen within that scenario because it has more time to happen. This does actually make sense and is true. However, that has nothing to do with anything that you have said or ever will say in this video. Since the passage of time itself continually expands the ocean of mathematical possibilities, a perpetual trend from order towards randomness is both a physical and a mathematical necessity. Um, no. Deciphering your word salad, what was just stated has nothing to do with randomness. In fact, randomness doesn't actually physically exist. Instead, we have our inability to predict things. But what you just said doesn't actually make sense and is in no way a scientific law. The truth of this law can be illustrated by considering two video clips. Do I need to ask you which video clip is being played backwards? It's obviously the second clip. But what makes us so sure of this? Because of our everyday experience with the scientific law of increasing randomness. No, it's our everyday experience of things breaking, more specifically, fracturing. Each of us instinctively knows that when some glass is left to itself, a pile of glass shards is much more probable than a molded, symmetrical, purposeful wine glass. Only a directed process that intelligently manufactures the wine glass will alter these probabilities and make the whole glass the more likely outcome. But that's because we have established that to be the process in which that is made. Now remember, the evolutionist is suggesting that scrambling nucleotides by way of mutation can spontaneously write coherent information. Well, that's a very misleading and vague way to put it. See, anything written in the genetic code, anything at all, has an effect on the organism, or at the very least has the ability to. So in that sense, everything that is within the genetic code is information. A change in any gene changes the way it affects the organism. From there, natural selection aids favorable genes and discourages unfavorable genes. And we have long known about mutations that do add genetic material. Not just a little bit of information, mind you, but 10,000 books efficiently encoded in one DNA molecule. But well, we did have billions of years to do it. But what does scientific law have to say about leaving things to themselves over time? Defined by themselves, because genetic codes are influenced by lots of things. Molecularly, it's affected by mutations, but environmentally, it's affected by what we call natural selection. That's right, increasing randomness. Which again, does not make sense and is not scientific. And mutations have always been random, 
But that's what natural selection does. Those that are better able to survive, survive more. Those that are less able to survive, survive less. So it makes sense that we will see an increase in desirable traits. And the longer the time, the greater the randomness. After a billion years, what do you suppose these glass shards will look like? No, if you left it by itself, it would remain the exact same way as when you left it. To produce something like that, it would have to be left in a hostile environment. That is, you need to introduce a mechanism for it to break down further. In physics, we have this law stated as the second law of thermodynamics. Oh lord. I mean science. I meant science. Come on. And disorder, also called entropy, is mathematically defined as a sum or the total within any given closed system. What? You're starting to show that you don't actually know what you're talking about. The second law of thermodynamics states that with any thermodynamically isolated system, the total level of entropy overall cannot decrease. Now, entropy is not the order of the universe. It is the ability of energy to be converted back into the state in which it previously was, at least without external work. Now, evolutionists respond very predictably with their talking points whenever the second law of thermodynamics is brought up. The way it goes is that creationists are condescendingly told that we do not understand the second law. Okay, condescending or not, you don't understand the second law of thermodynamics. What you do is you take a very specific, very strictly defined scientific law and you overgeneralize it. Then you overgeneralize that overgeneralization and you say that it applies to everything in every circumstance, which is simply not the case. Then it is explained to us that the second law of thermodynamics only applies to a closed system, but that we have an open system, with the energy of the sun replenishing the biosphere of the earth through the process of photosynthesis. Which is true. The second law of thermodynamics only applies to thermodynamically isolated systems. Thermodynamically isolated systems do not receive mass nor energy. The earth receives energy. Therefore, the Earth is not a thermodynamically isolated system. Therefore, the second law of thermodynamics does not apply to the Earth as a whole. Yes, the Earth receives low entropy energy from the Sun, and organisms give off that energy in the form of high entropy heat. So what we have are evolution scientists trying to convince us that the second scientific law of the universe should be ignored where evolution is concerned. No, not that it should be ignored, but that what you're talking about does not actually violate the second law of thermodynamics. With respect to my evolutionist friends, no one is above the law. Let me give you my top three reasons why evolutionists are wrong about the second law of thermodynamics. Reason number three. Getting off on a technicality doesn't work with the law of the universe. Okay, two points. First of all, this is not a technicality. This is ingrained into the very definition of the second law of thermodynamics. And second of all, yes, it does work with scientific laws. That's because scientific laws are very technical, very strictly defined. You're trying to say that scientific laws cannot be strictly defined and that they have to apply to absolutely every scenario, which is simply not the case. Dr. Sewell explains that the laws of probability are not suspended simply because we have an open system. Well, here's the thing. We're not talking about laws of probability. We're talking about physical science, and you're not suspending any law. We're simply stating how it does not apply to what you're talking about. Highly random sunlight brings no such order. We're not talking about the randomness of sunlight. We're talking about the entropy of sunlight, which is really low. And the Earth is given sunlight pretty consistently, i.e. not randomly. In the second law, the formula for chaos probability is a total, a sum. It is not chaos probability. It's the total entropy. We're not talking about probability here. And a sum requires boundaries. This is the real reason the law mentions a closed system. No, it's not. They didn't come up with the math and then come up with the concept. The real reason it talks about an isolated system is because the entropy of a certain system is affected by the energy that it receives and the energy that it gives off. So, what if we simply change the system boundaries from this to this? Now, what's their excuse? 
Well, the Earth and Sun are not completely isolated systems. But let's say that they are. Let's say that the only things in the universe that exist is our Sun and our Earth. Nothing would change and we would be increasing with the amount of entropy that we have. The Sun constantly gives off low entropy energy, but it won't do that forever. It will eventually burn out. But the Earth receives that low entropy energy. Biological mechanisms convert that into chemical energy, which has more entropy, and then ultimately to heat, which has lots of entropy. That's basically what the second law of thermodynamics states, and in no way does it disprove evolution. You see, a closed system excuse is nothing but a smokescreen for ignoring a law of science. No, it's not. It's just a way for them to say that you don't know what you're talking about without going through a very complicated explanation. Do you doubt me? Then ask an evolutionist to describe the mechanism for spontaneous increase of order within an open system. Again, we're not talking about your idea of order. We're talking about entropy. And there's absolutely no way for entropy to decrease spontaneously, at least not within a thermodynamically isolated system. But here's the thing, low entropy energy from the sun increases in entropy as it goes throughout biological organisms. We act according to the second law of thermodynamics. Reason number two, physics is not the only scientific endeavor where this law is found. Increasing randomness applies in all disciplines. It does not, because that doesn't even make sense. What we're talking about is the second law of thermodynamics. That's what they were explaining away. They were talking about an established scientific fact, and not something that some creationist made up. In information science particularly. What you're talking about is information theory, not information science. And that is actually completely different from physical science. Information theory, more than anything, has to do with probabilities. And physical science has nothing to do with probabilities. We have also a defined law of increasing entropy. And the math is exactly the same, except for using variables concerning information instead of physics. Actually, it's different from the many, many different equations you could use to represent the second law of thermodynamics. And even if it was identical to one of them, that doesn't mean anything. That just means that identical parts in the equation have the same relationship with the other parts. But that doesn't mean that the equations have anything to do with each other. Evolutionists have been completely neglecting information science. It's information theory, and we don't talk about it because it has absolutely nothing to do with evolution. We would talk about information theory if we were flipping coins or gambling, but we're not. We're talking about physical processes, which is not related to probabilities. The law of increasing randomness must be applied not just to physical organisms, but to the genetic information itself. No, it does not. We know how that information comes to be and how it affects organisms. And it has nothing to do with information theory, or the second law of thermodynamics for that matter. And the number one reason evolutionists are not above the law. Only the intervention of design can suspend the natural trend of increasing randomness. Which again, does not make sense, and is not scientific. Randomness cannot increase or decrease. The law of increasing randomness does not exist. If it does, it's not scientific, and has nothing to do with biological organisms. We act according to the second law of thermodynamics, and thereby, we do not need any sort of law to be suspended.